Have you ever wondered why INFJs seem intimidating without even trying? This phenomenon is not uncommon for them. They are introverted, intuitive, feeling, and judging. It is one of the 16 personality types defined by the Myers-Briggs indicator. These individuals are unique, to say the least. The INFJs are known for their depth of insight, a characteristic that sets them apart from everyone. Their presence is intense, often leaving a lasting impression on those they interact with. INFJs aren't just about depth and intensity. They possess an array of unique characteristics that leave others feeling both intrigued and intimidated. These characteristics aren't necessarily negative. They're different, and that difference can sometimes be perceived as intimidating. But what exactly are these characteristics that make INFJs so intimidating, and why do people perceive them this way? To better understand this, we'll be exploring nine key reasons behind this common perception. Each reason provides a glimpse into the intriguing world of INFJs, a world that is often misunderstood. So, are you ready to dive into the depth of an INFJ's world? Firstly, INFJs possess an uncanny depth of insight that can be quite intimidating to others. They have this extraordinary ability, a gift of sorts, to see beyond what's on the surface. Imagine a scenario where your conversation partner seems to reach into the depths of your being, comprehending not just your words, but also the silent expressions and hidden meanings. This is not an uncommon occurrence when you're with INFJs. Meet Diane. She's an INFJ who thought people didn't like her much. Diane has this exceptional talent for deciphering people's true intentions, even if those people are unaware of them. Her ability to intuitively understand others often leaves her co-workers feeling slightly uncomfortable. They mistake her depth of understanding as being intrusive, even prying. It was only when Diane realized her INFJ personality that she comprehended that her insights were not an error, but a defining feature of her personality. This ability to deeply understand others, while a blessing, can sometimes make others feel threatened. After all, it's not every day that you encounter someone who seems to comprehend you better than you comprehend yourself. So, the depth of insight, while a gift, can sometimes be a double-edged sword for INFJs. INFJs are known for their non-conformity and dislike for surface-level interactions. Two more reasons why they might seem intimidating. Let's look into these characteristics and see how they play out in everyday life. Non-conformity is a trait that most INFJs possess. They tend to have their own unique perspectives, often differing from the mainstream. They're not afraid to stand alone in their beliefs and values, and this can sometimes be seen as intimidating. Picture this. You're in a group discussion, and everyone seems to agree on a particular point. Suddenly, Diane, our INFJ, raises her hand and presents an entirely different viewpoint. She's not being contrarian for the sake of it, she genuinely sees things differently. This can be quite unnerving for some, and they might perceive Diane as intimidating. Now let's talk about their dislike for surface-level interactions. INFJs crave depth and substance in their conversations. They yearn for meaningful connections and are often disinterested in small talk. Diane, for instance, would rather discuss the meaning of life than the latest celebrity gossip. She seeks out conversations that stimulate her mind and soul. But this can make others feel out of their depth, leading them to view Diane as intimidating. But here's the thing. Diane's non-conformity and her desire for deep conversations aren't flaws. They're just part of who she is, part of her INFJ personality. She's not trying to be difficult or intimidating, she's just being herself. And that's okay. It's more than okay. It's wonderful. Remember, being different isn't a bad thing. It's what makes us unique, what makes us who we are. And craving meaningful conversations isn't a flaw, it's a strength. It shows a desire to understand and connect with others on a deeper level. Yes, these traits can sometimes make others feel uneasy. But at the end of the day, it's about embracing who we are and respecting others for who they are. That's what truly matters. So, next time you find yourself feeling intimidated by an INFJ, remember this. They're not trying to be intimidating. They're just being true to themselves. And there's nothing more beautiful than that. Another reason why INFJs might come across as intimidating is their independence and their reliance on introverted intuition. This independence can be seen in their tendency to march to the beat of their own drum. INFJs value their autonomy and aren't afraid to stand alone in their beliefs or decisions. They're not the type to follow the crowd which can make them seem unapproachable or intimidating to those who are more inclined towards conformity. Now let's consider introverted intuition. This is the dominant function of an INFJ and it's like their personal crystal ball. It allows them to see patterns and make predictions about the future based on these patterns. 
This can often lead to INFJs having insights or ideas that others can't readily see or understand, which can make them seem mysterious or even intimidating to others. Let's return to our friend Diane. Remember, she felt like people didn't like her, but then she discovered she was an INFJ. She began to understand that it wasn't that people didn't like her, they were just intimidated by her independence and intuition. Diane was always the one to take the road less traveled, to make decisions based on her gut feelings, and to have insights that were way ahead of their time. It wasn't that she was trying to be different, she was just being her authentic INFJ self. But once she understood this, she was able to adjust her approach. She started explaining her thought process more often, and showed that her independence was not a rejection of others, but a reflection of her confidence in her own intuition. This helped her to be less intimidating while still being true to herself. So, you see, the independence and introverted intuition of an INFJ can be a double-edged sword. On one hand, it can lead to them being seen as intimidating. On the other, it is also the source of their strength and uniqueness. The beauty of independence and intuition can sometimes be mistaken for aloofness or arrogance. But as we've seen with Diane, understanding and communication can go a long way in bridging this gap. Now let's talk about the emotional intensity, firm boundaries, and reserved confidence of INFJs. These traits, while they can lend a sense of intimidation, are also key to the depth and thoughtfulness that define the INFJ personality type. Let's start with emotional intensity. INFJs feel things deeply. They experience a wide spectrum of emotions and are not afraid to face them head on. This emotional depth can sometimes be overwhelming for others who are not used to such a level of intensity. Remember Diane? She realized that her emotional intensity was often mistaken for severity, causing a barrier in her relationships. Next, we have firm boundaries. INFJs value their privacy and personal space. They have clear lines that they do not like to be crossed. This can be misconstrued as aloofness or coldness, but in reality, it's a self-protective measure. Diane learned that her boundaries were not walls to keep people out, but shields to protect her sensitive nature. Lastly, let's discuss reserved confidence. INFJs possess a quiet confidence that doesn't need to be loudly proclaimed. They know their worth and don't feel the need to prove it to anyone. This can be off-putting to those who equate confidence with extroverted displays of bravado. Diane found that her reserved confidence was often mistaken for arrogance, but once she understood this, she was able to communicate her self-assuredness in a way that was less intimidating to others. As you can see, these traits can be intimidating, but they also make INFJs the deep, thoughtful individuals they are. Understanding these traits is not just about dispelling the intimidation factor, but about appreciating the unique strengths and perspectives that INFJs bring to the table. It's about seeing the beauty in the depth, the strength in the boundaries, and the power in the reserved confidence. And for our INFJs like Diane, it's about embracing these qualities, harnessing them, and using them to navigate the world with grace, authenticity, and a calm confidence that is far less intimidating. So now we understand why INFJs might come across as intimidating, even when they don't mean to be. This doesn't mean that they are bad or unfriendly. Quite the contrary, INFJs are some of the most insightful, intense, and independent individuals you'll ever meet. They value depth in their interactions and possess a unique blend of introverted intuition and emotional intensity. Remember the nine reasons we've discussed today, their depth of insight, intense presence, non-conformity, dislike for surface-level interactions, independence, introverted intuition, emotional intensity, firm boundaries, and reserved confidence. These traits might seem intimidating at first, but they're just part of what makes an INFJ so special. Like our friend Diane, many INFJs might not realize how they come across to others, but once they understand these traits, they can learn to navigate their relationships more effectively. They can be their authentic selves, while also being mindful of how they might be perceived. And for those of us who interact with INFJs, understanding these traits can help us appreciate their unique perspectives. It's not about changing who they are, but about celebrating their uniqueness and learning to communicate with them in a way that respects their individuality. Let's not forget, every personality type has its own strengths and challenges. The beauty of understanding personality types is that it allows us to appreciate the diversity of human experiences. It's not about labeling or boxing people in, but about fostering empathy and understanding. Remember, being an INFJ is a journey of self-discovery. It's about exploring who you are and how you relate to the world around you. The more you understand yourself, the better you can navigate your relationships and live a fulfilling life. So let's continue this conversation. 
How has understanding your personality type helped you in life? Maybe you're an INFJ who's learned to embrace your intensity, or perhaps you're someone who's learned to appreciate the INFJs in your life. Whatever your experience, we'd love to hear from you. And don't forget to subscribe for more insights into the fascinating world of personality types. We have a lot more to explore together, and we can't wait to share this journey with you. Until next time, embrace your unique self. Remember, it's your uniqueness that makes you special. It's your individuality that adds color to the world. So keep shining, keep exploring, and keep being you.